Hey, hey, hey guys, it's Frecky here, and today I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite kitchen gadgets. All right, so first I want to thank Lisa from Dumpy to Diva for inviting me on this collab for top five kitchen gadgets. If you haven't seen one before, what a collab is, or my roommate makes fun of me for saying collab, so collab, uh, what they are is it's a group of YouTubers that all work together for a specific topic, and then what I'll do is I'll put a link down below to everybody else that's in here. So there's a great group of people that are all talking about this. They all have different versions of you know, a YouTube channel. So like me, I'm a vlogger, and I... I'm on a weight loss journey. Some have more where they focus more on recipes. Some they do a lot of shopping hauls or meal prepping. Whatever you, your interest could be related to this type of topic, they're all here. So from Dumpy to Diva invited me to join and share my thoughts on it. And with that, I do want to go into a quick, although it's kind of not going to be that quick, so sorry, but explanation of my video and how it came about. So originally for this, what I was going to do was have all of my top five favorite gadgets out and use them and make a video and actually make a meal with all of them so you can kind of see pretty easily how quickly and how smoothly everything can go with that. Well, Tuesday, when I was going to record this, um, my bedroom light here was out and you can't tell from this little box here but I have like 12 foot ceilings. I'm 6'1 but I can't reach that. So I try climbing on a chair. Doesn't doesn't work and so I have to get a ladder and as I've mentioned before ladders kind of scare me because like the ladder that I have at the moment it weight, its weight limit is 250 pounds. As of last weigh-in I am 355. So I'm over 100 pounds over that limit. So it made me nervous. But I went ahead and climbed up on it, changed it as quickly as I could and got down and the ladder didn't die. I didn't die. It was great. So I was very happy. So I'm going to put the ladder away. Now, the shelf where all of my favorite gadgets that I was going to talk about, I'm still going to talk about them. It's on this triangle thing in the corner right in my little hallway over here, going through the kitchen into the living room. And... I proceed to knock that over. So everything on there goes flying. And so the handle on one of them is broken off and that's how you actually open it. It's gone. Another thing, the bottom is busted and so it's all wobbly. And the other, the rest were fine, but those kind of made me iffy. So I, I clean everything up, I get out the super glue, I get out some tape, I get all MacGyver with it and put it all back together as best I can. I plug them each in individually. They seem to work fine. So cool. I can still do the video. So I rearrange the entire kitchen so that I have my giant kitchen table up against the wall so I can have all of them next to each other on display. And I start. So I start using the one thing. It's fine. Move on to the second one. And when I go to turn it on, it says the lid is not on. So it can't work. But the lid is on. So I'm sitting here fighting with it, trying to talk nice to the camera while I'm fighting with this darn machine. So I'm like, all right, fine. I'll just explain what happened and I'll just cook these on the stove instead. And I will just explain how you would use it if you had one that was working. So I can put them in the stove, da, 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 move on to the next thing. And I, while I'm prepping the next thing, I just slap the lid on the first one and it starts working. So I'm like, all right, well, let's see if it'll let me use it. So I go and take the stuff out of the pot, put it back in there, put the lid on, and it's working. Fantastic. Super, super happy. I can continue with my video. So I move on to the last thing, start going that, and everything's going smooth. Everything has like one minute till it's all done. That was the, the idea of why this was so perfect, because when using all of these items, because they're so quick, you could have everything done at one time. Then I blew a fuse. Or rather, the surge protector they were all plugged into blew. And so now I'm scrambling frantically to, because they each have like one minute left, to get them plugged into a different wall, one at a time, finish cooking them, and go. And 
after glancing at the videos, I it wasn't usable. It was too hectic. So I scratch those, I delete those. And I'm like, well, at least the food came out good, so I can show a picture of that. And I forgot to prep the photo, so sorry. But um, <laughs> it's actually not even going to be on this video. So, But anyway, so I recorded another video, and I had the picture on there, and I described the items and went into detail and everything that I'm about to do again. And cool, done. So as we all know, I'm a gamer. I, a new character came out on Overwatch, I hop on, I start playing, blah, 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 whatever. I have until Friday for this video to go up, and it's Tuesday, so cool. So about 9, 10 o'clock that night, I noticed that my webcam is recording. And I'm like, oh crud, it's recording for six hours, which I've done that before. Like, where you hit stop recording on here, if you click too quick, it'll stop and start a new one. I've done that dozens of times. No big deal. I just delete the six hour long video to clear up the memory on my computer and cool. And that's when I notice the video that I made on my on here f is gone. I never turned it off and started again. I just never turned it off. So here I am again. It's Thursday now because I <laughs> did not have time at 10 o'clock at night with my roommate home to record a whole nother video. So here we are and yeah, that, that, was, that was fun. <laughs> that was a very, very fun day. Lots and lots of lessons learned. So I will be back to, to do actual kitchen cooking videos. And so far, all of the items seem to be working fine. Just can't plug them all into the same wall. Probably should have thought of that. So anyway, so the very first thing on my list, um, it probably would be my number one, mainly not because of its versatility, but because of how often I use it would be an air fryer. So this, you can get on Amazon, this particular one for $58.99. And I use this thing a lot because one, it's not that expensive. I'm, I'm pretty cheap. And two, it is super quick. And so like when I get off of work, for those that are new to the channel, I'm a hairstylist. So six to eight hours of working and we don't stop. We don't clock out for lunch breaks. We don't do any of that. We just go. So a lot of times after that, I'm tired after work. So I can come home and I have literally done this where I just grab, like run across the street to the grocery store, come home and grab chicken strips, like chicken tenderloins, just raw chicken tenderloins and just throw them in there, cook them for like 12 minutes and they're perfect. That's without any seasoning, but you can do plenty more with it. You can have breaded chicken strips. What I made the other day, which I don't have a picture on here for, is uh, I made Southwest chicken strips, which was really good because then you just, all, for that, all it was, um, I don't remember everything that I put in it. So like in a Ziploc bag, throw in the chicken, throw in some lime juice, some cumin powder, some chili powder, um, some hot sauce, and a couple other things and just let that sit for like 10 minutes and then toss them in there. Perfect. But this thing has a bunch of other uses and these are just some that I've used it for. There's a million more. I mean, Google is a thing, so obviously I wanna give advice, but I'm not gonna list everything. But so things that I've personally used it for is like pumpkin seeds. They're perfect for you know, cooking those suckers up and with it gonna be fall soon, looking forward to that. Another thing would be chips. Like obviously your traditional potatoes, you slice them up real thin, toss them in there, but you can make veggie chips, you can make kale chips, you can make pickle chips, all amazing. And then just rapid fire other things is you can do hard boiled eggs in here. You can do fries or sweet potato fries, the pre-frozen or fresh. You can do tater tots or veggie tots. I really love making cauliflower tots. So good, toss them in there, perfect. You can do fried green tomatoes, you can do buffalo cauliflower, you can do a million different things and all of them are super, super quick and not a lot of mess. The only thing that I would complain about with this particular air fryer is it's not that huge. I think it's like a six quart. Um, so certain items, you, you can't overstuff it because if you are doing a lot, you don't want them all just mashed together. They need, they need room for air to flow between them. So you do have to work in small batches. But for me, I'm a single dude. I can easily put just enough in there for me in there. It's not great for mass production, but for one or two people, totally, totally fine. 
So I love this, and I, I'll have a link below to all of the things um, for, for them on Amazon, because that's pretty much where I buy anything. Pretty much anything in my life comes off of Amazon. Even last night, couldn't sleep, don't know why, but at 3 a.m. decided to buy a kilt. Don't know. It happens. But anyway, next thing. This, I'm sure many people will have this on their list, is the Instant Pot. Like this thing, it is a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, a steamer, a rice cooker. It even has a saute option. So many options. You can even, like if I, can I, can I do this? Let me unlock it and let me make it a little bit bigger. See all those buttons there? They have options for soup slash broth, meat, stew, uh, bean chili, poultry, rice, multigrain, porridge, steam, all kinds of stuff on there. And so like on here, just some things that I have made with it. Uh, let's put that back where it belongs. There we go. So <laughs> some things that I've made with it um, is easily shredding meat. You toss that in there. I forget the time, probably like 12. Everything seems to be 12. But you put that in there, like say chicken breast or chicken in general, steam it up, or turn it, pressurize it, and just it falls apart with a fork. You don't even really have to work super hard at shredding it. You just pick it up a million times and it'll just fall apart and be shredded. It's perfect. But, um, and great with like, you know, toss barbecue sauce or sloppy joe sauce or whatever. Boom, easy. Uh, but other things that you can do, you can do a whole roasted chicken, like a rotisserie chicken. You can toss one of those suckers in there raw, cook it for 30 minutes, and it is perfect. You can do baked potatoes for like 12 minutes, done. Steamed vegetables. This is what I use it a lot for is because that's what I was using it for the other day was I was making honey glazed carrots. You literally put carrots in there, three minutes, done. They are soft. They aren't mushy but they're soft tender then you just toss in some oil or some honey and boom they were fantastic i did eat all the food i made it was great um again you can do hard boiled eggs they're done in five minutes in this thing you can even make a cheesecake in here and it just takes 35 minutes i haven't done that one yet just because cheesecake is a weakness of mine and i feel like if i make it i am going to eat the whole thing and obviously, I'm on a weight loss journey, so eating an entire cheesecake, not exactly on my agenda. If I choose to have cheesecake and use the points for it or the bites for it, I will go buy a slice of it from somewhere. But you can make it in there in 35 minutes. So one of these days, as a birthday or something, some kind of amazing whatever, where I'll do that. But you can also make soups in here. You can make yogurt in here. That's pretty cool. It's pretty easy. It's time consuming and you need a meat thermometer, but you can. You can make rice in here. So that's awesome. And spiced apple cider. You can do so many things in here. Soups are the main thing that I personally use it for just because it's the easiest thing. It's the quickest thing and it's giant pot. So why not? All right, so anyway, you can get, I don't think I said it. You can get that on Amazon and it's $89.96 for this particular one. They have other ones. They have some that cost more. They have bigger ones. They have smaller ones. A lot, a lot of options. But for basic needs, I think this size is perfect. And you can make bulk items. So it's you, it's not like the air fryer where I'm like, you need the bigger ones or anything like that. But yeah. So rice cooker is the next thing on my list. The Instapot you can use to make rice. But this thing is, you know, designed for it specifically. And I feel like it's kind of great because you can have the rice cooking in here while you have something else cooking in the Instant Pot and have it both done. Boom. So this particular one, this is a big honker. So it is $93.11. I'll put the link to it below, but you can get some as little as $19 on Amazon. It doesn't have to be this big guy. But I like it because of how big it is. You can make a lot in it. And especially if you do use it for other things, because obviously you can make white rice and brown rice. And actually that's not the one that we have. We used to, I used to have that one, I don't anymore. I got one that has a bunch of different options. It looks similar to the Instapot actually. I get them confused sometimes, but like ours is actually deeper than this Instapot. But either way, this one is the one that I used to have and it was fantastic. But um, besides just the white and brown rice, like one thing, and this is what I made the other day, you can make Spanish rice easily in there because you don't have to just put 
rice and water in here. You can put whatever you want to, basically. So in here, I tossed the the rice. I used chicken uh, broth instead of um, instead of water, and then I added tomato paste and some uh, like rotel in there, and then you just put, turn it on and let it go. It it'll turn itself off. Well, what it switches to warm, and done. So it's super easy. You just stir it together and boom, it tastes fantastic. Um, and some other things you can use this for, a lot of people, you know, think rice cooker. Like, how often am I going to need to cook a lot of rice? But you can make oatmeal in this. You can make chili. You can steam vegetables. That I actually do a lot of. I love putting broccoli in this sucker and, and just steaming it up. You can poach with it. You can do slow cooking. And it's great for keeping things warm. So if you're going to a potluck or anything like that and you don't have... You know, like the Instapot's kind of bulky to bring somewhere. These things are a little bit more portable. And so, boom, you can put it in there and it'll keep things warm forever. Because that second light there, the, the little blue light at the bottom, that's the keep warm light. So you know that it's keeping things warm. Perfect. Easy. All right. The next thing on my list is a ninja. Nutra Ninja, I think it's officially called. I'll put the link below. You can get it for like... $44.99 on Amazon. Um, this is the one that I that we have. Uh, when I say we, I have a roommate. So some of the stuff's mine, some of the stuff's his. But um, we have this one. And then we actually have... Uh, whoop, over here. We have um, an, a, another option for it where it's a lot bigger. And so like when I make banana ice cream, I use the bigger one because it's easier. I love the, these options because... You can make a personal smoothie with them. So you can make a lot of stuff with them, but I do like the bigger containers rather than just the personal cups. But the personal cups come in handy because they do give you like perfect sizing. And plus then you can just switch it out. Like you blend it on one, you screw off the blade, you put on a lid and boom, it's easy. And I've said boom a lot in this. I don't think I've said boom this often in my entire life. Don't know what's up with that, but it's a thing. So anyway, so as I said, smoothies are perfect in here. The number one thing I use this for is banana ice cream. I love making banana ice cream, especially with me being on the carb conscious plan on iTrack Bites. It's one point. So if you haven't done it before, what you do is you peel two, two and a half bananas. I usually peel three and like, you know, eat half of one. And then break them in half and put them in the freezer. Best is overnight. You can do it for a few hours, but I, I typically find it it's quicker if you let them freeze overnight. Because if they're frozen overnight and they're all the way solid, then when you take them out, you put them in your blender, you add a cup of almond milk and a splash of vanilla, blend it up, and you have ice cream. If they're not overnight frozen then they tend to be softer like a smoothie, but not even as smooth as a smoothie, if that makes sense. So a lot of times I blend it, if I've done it too quickly, I blend it, then pour it in a bowl and pop it in the freezer. And then, you know, an hour or two later, I can have the ice cream. And that works wonderfully. But I prefer just making it easier, just plan ahead, do it overnight. Uh, other things you can make with this thing are nut butters. You can literally make your own peanut butter or almond butter or whatever butter with these things. You can make crushed ice, perfect for parties. You can make hummus. You can make dips, salsa, guacamole. You can make batter, like pancake batter or waffle batter. There's a lot of other things. That's just some of the basics that I've done. I'm sure other people and maybe somebody else on this collab will talk about the Ninja or their own version of it. But... Um, there's other stuff you can do, but that's just what I mainly do. Honestly, the main thing I do is make banana ice cream because I love it. It makes me happy. It makes me really, really happy. Anyway, so the next thing, it's not really a gadget per se, but measuring spoons and cups. These make my life easy. One, I'm not a person that can easily just eyeball something and know that's a cup, that's a tablespoon, that's a teaspoon. I'm not good at that. Like, yes, I will eyeball some stuff when I cook. If it's like spices, you know, it's a pinch of this, a dash of that or whatever. But for the rest of cooking, these things I use left and right. I literally have several sets of the spoons and I have two of the, the big cups there. 
and they are so, so helpful. Plus, what's perfect is if you're like me and trying to lose weight, you need to portion your food. This way you know exactly how much you're portion, especially if you're a meal prepper, those suckers come in handy, especially the whoop, wrong way, the, uh, the guys up here. Those because they'll have half cup and in, in a cup in, in the scoop form. If you need, you know, to measure out your your rice, your cheese, your whatever, you can use those and it's perfect. Boom, toss it in, move on to the next item and keep going. And it's great for when you are like say you create a recipe because uh, I, I have a friend that um, – well, I, I saw another YouTuber that was having issues not knowing how many serving size something is. If I could think of her name, I would mention it right now, but I can't think of it. So she'll be below. Anyway, um, and I'll put a link to her in the comments – in the description box. But anyway, she was talking about you know she's new to trying to lose weight or trying to cook for herself and everything like that. And – she doesn't know how to tell how many servings something is, which is a legit concern. Like, I grew up in a family where the second I was tall enough to reach the stove, it was thrown on my chores list. We took turns cooking. So I, I'm lucky in that department, but not everybody is that. So, like, what I do, like, say the example she was talking about was chili, and this is how I explained it to her in um, in, in her in her comments. But you make your chili just like you're going to. You went, and then you go to the, uh, any recipe builder, like on iTrack Bytes or whatever app you're using, plug in all the ingredients, and then chilies in one pot, give yourself another pot. It's a little bit time consuming, and maybe somebody else has a better option, but literally take that measuring cup, scoop out a cup, pour it in the next, and scoop up, like if a cup is going to be a serving. I think a cup is a pretty decent size of chili, especially, but whatever you are, like however much you personally would want to eat, and measure that out and until you're out of stuff in the first pot. And then you you save that in your recipe builder. And you, So say you made chili and it has 16 servings in it. You know every single time you make that, if you follow that recipe, it's 16 servings. Pretty easy. Made simpler. I, I'm never going to get used to pointing in the right direction. Anyway, made simpler with the measuring stuff. So they come in handy. I love them. They're super, super helpful. I use them for literally everything I cook, especially if I'm measuring out how much of it I'm eating, which I need to do. So yeah, so that's all of mine. I am not an expert chef. I, I don't have a bunch of fun gadgets. So these are the basics that I feel for making things easier without spending a ton of money because these are kind of big purchase items if you're buying them all. But if you buy them one at a time, it, it, it's, it's not bad. And they are so useful for so many different things. And like say, you know, if you have to pick one of them to get one, I highly recommend the air fryer just because that's super easy. And I love fried foods, but you don't have to actually deep fry them. You can air fry them. So that's the one I would recommend most. But as far as for having the most versatility, the Instant Pot, it can do everything except for air frying. But I believe on the boil function, you could probably get pretty darn close to actual frying if you wanted to. Don't quote me on that, I don't know. But you can do everything else with that. So if you're gonna start either one air fryer, just because if you're like me and eat like I would like to eat, that is the quickest, easiest way. But if not the Instant Pot, I highly recommend being the next, um, next on the top of the list because you can do so much with it and it's it's super super versatile and i love that but yeah so that is pretty much all that i have on this topic so if you are new to this channel i i thank you for stopping by and i think again dump from dumpy to diva for inviting me to be part of this collab and everybody else that is part of it and i'm excited to see what everybody else comes up with and see if there's anything i need to add to my shopping list so yeah, if you have any questions about any of these type of um, items, feel free to message me. Not an expert, as I said, but I like messages, so that's cool. And so as I always say at the end of all my videos, if you are on a journey, please comment below. Let me know. I love to support you. I love getting the support from you. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button and click the little bell. That way you'll get notified 
anytime I post a video, especially a video like this, where it's an extra video, not on a Sunday or Tuesday, where I normally will be posting videos. And please like and share. And until Sunday when I do my next weigh-in, I'll see you all later.